Okay. Uh, number 50 is where you're going to hit me. That, that's where Hanabi? Hanabi? That's where Hanabi fell. <laughs> to be fair... It, the game is way better. Correction. Make an addendum to the list. Let's flip-flop the two. Hanabi was 57 last year, so it's not like it moved up that much. I've heard you say multiple times, I like the game a lot more than Hanabi. So number forty nine is the is grifters. Wait, oh fifty. I was like, wait. So we well, jumped over Hanabi really quick. I actually want to hear your explanation on why Hanabi is is better than uh, the game. I okay. I enjoy the uh, being able to communicate information to players about their hands. The game is so hard to figure stuff out. Hanabi, there is a way to get it right. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Isn't enough for you? Nope. Okay. I, I, I enjoy that part of it. I, Every man has a right to their own opinion. <laughs> I've had some great moments in the game, and don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah, like that one? Those two? Oh, yeah, we've had two games. We've, like we've had two perfect games. The other one was... The other one, the first one was the craziest. So. Yeah, yeah. But Hanabi fits my puzzler more. I respect it. Do I? I do think that I gave respect. the game too low of a ranking, and I didn't really see that until we got in here. Yeah, but. So. And Hanabi's maybe a little higher than it should be. Those two should probably be closer. Within like five of each other, maybe? Five to ten. For you, I, it'd be different for me. Yeah, but five to ten. Uh, oh, I know you like the game more than Hanabi. Uh, I don't, Hanabi, I think, would be down at probably 80s. If on the list at all. The game would probably be in 50s. I, I understand. Believe so me, I understand. 49 was... Was Grifters. And, uh, good game. Very good game. Another one of those, how can you maximize what you have in your hand? Mm -hmm. How can you make the most of this? And one of the best uses of the cooldown mechanic I've mm -hmm. seen in the game. Card comes in, goes off to the side, and it takes time to come back to your hand. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen it in very many others. No, there are some uh, There's some games that use battle, cooldown. Battle, battle cru oh, was it Battle Cruisers? Battle Cruisers had the cooldown. It has a small, it's like a Very open. small. It has a every other turn. Yeah. Down, which is fine for that game because there aren't that many rounds. Yeah. But the Grifters goes a little longer, so it's fine for that game to have a three turn cooldown. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like the way you build your deck. I like, yeah. Yes. It's, it's solid. It's, it's simpler than. It's very yeah. simple, but it's also got uh, deceiving layers mm -hmm. of strategy to mm -hmm. it. And each time I've played it, I've learned more about it. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Which is fantastic. Uh, 48 is Hugh. It's a little past the game. Yeah. And it, uh, it captures people's attention. It is, it's easy to teach and it's hard to master. Because okay. trying to figure out those color groups, people are just like, uh, what? Is that the one we played? Uh, I think it is. It's the one with the dots. You play all. No, that's different. Uh, okay. He was the one. You play all your cards except one. The card you don't play is your scorecard. Okay. And then for each uh, group of each color group, you get points. Or you, you get points for the biggest of each color. Okay. Uh, and so, like a full score is three, and a partial score is one. And so you're trying to make big groups of colors, but then there's poison. That can make that group worth zero. Hmm. So I think you've played Hugh, but you might not remember it. Yeah. Uh, Forty-seven is Forbidden Desert slash Island. Okay, so you included. Them. I I combined them. I lean more on Forbidden Desert mm -hmm. than Island for the ranking, but I do say both. Okay. Um, I would separate them, but. 
I want to be able to fit more games in my that's list. That's the one, yeah, yeah, that's the one. So I just say, eh, hey. Uh, if, if anything, it's Forbidden Desert. That's true, yeah. Uh, and Forbidden Island maybe doesn't even make the list on its own merits. Oh, no, that would on mine. Yeah. So it's co-op, it's put things together. Forbidden Island plays out a little too samey for me. Like I've played it so many times because of the iPad app, which is fantastic. But I kind of know what's coming. Forbidden Desert, I don't know what's coming, even though there is an iPad And that app. swimmer, too, is a huge role that, like, basically... Oh, like the, you don't, the diver. The diver. Yeah. You don't really have that in Forbidden Island. Or no. Forbidden Desert. You have a climber, but it doesn't... Because there's the same amount of tiles. Yeah, because you're not removing... Uh, yeah, the diver tiles. can take advantage of that. Like, Oh, yeah, the diver can go from one side of the map to the other. Mm -hmm. And just be good. So. Good game, though. They're, both of them are really good Oh, games. yeah. I, I tell people now, if you want a good family game, go Forbidden Island. If you want a good gamer game, go Forbidden Desert. Uh, but they both can accommodate. But they both work for both. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, Pandemic's probably the better gamer game. Mm -hmm. uh, 46 is Kings of Air and Steam. I don't know okay. if you've played it. It's a pick-up and deliver game, but it's uh, it's got uh, dirigibles or no, blimps. And then you so you use those to pick up the goods, and then you drop them off, and you use trains to deliver stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, it's good balance. Uh, you've got character powers. You have very limited actions. Uh, you have card plays. You get to upgrade your trains, your blimps, your storage capacity. And so there's a lot of a give and take in what you do each time. Uh, and you, sometimes you're out of money, so your action is bank. I need money. Hmm. Uh, it's it's one of those good balance games. Forty five is patchwork. It's new, new to the list. I don't even know that I played it this time last year. Yeah, so. um, it's a little low than I thought it would be. I thought it'd be in the thirties. Yeah, a uh, low. Or high 30s, 38, 39. Sure. I, I think you will see the games that hit in that range, and I don't know that you'll fault me. I really like Patchwork. Um, I can see this game continuing to climb higher. If we play it more. Yeah. If we don't, I don't think it will. But... No, I don't think it will stay in my mind, but I was talking to Ian, one of my friends from college about it, and I said, I feel like it's one of those games that it's easy enough to get into. It's got a non-threatening theme, so mm -hmm. it doesn't offend non-gamers. Mm -hmm. It's got enough mechanics to, to hold the attention of gamers. It might be close to the perfect two-player game. Do you know anything about Cottage Garden? No, but I've heard that it's kind of like multiplayer patchwork. Kind of like multiplayer patchwork, um, but it—I feel like it, it has a little bit more. It's kind of a more strategic patchwork, I would say. Okay. Um, and you're actually um, able to a little bit more able to fill in your entire board as opposed to. Patchwork, where it's yeah. kind of a uh, yeah, how do you not well minimize your yeah yeah we'll have to give that a try. Uh, Forty four Lords of Waterdeep. Wow, and you haven't played that a lot, and mm -hmm. you haven't played that at all with me. Not with you, but I got to play it uh, a couple months back, and that was enough for it to catapult. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, I think that was plus I think that was like the second or third time that I played it. Mm -hmm. And that was enough to to do it. It's a good game. I played it three times, twice, two yeah. times. Um, it's a it's a great introductory like worker placement. Um, I think there's other ones that may be a little bit easier worker placement, but 
Yeah, but then you run into the potential problem of do they do enough? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's a good balance of what's out there. Yeah. I think Lords of Waterdeep does a really good job of saying, hey, this is what worker placement is. Mm -hmm. And there's enough take that in the game that you can counteract a runaway leader. Yeah. Uh, and there's enough ability to, to say, hey, I don't like where this is going, so I need to, to handle it. Um, there's, some, there's some things I don't like about it, but what I like about it outweighs what I don't like. Significantly yeah. outweighs what I don't like. It's a good game. It is a very good game. Uh, 43 code names. Fell down a bit. I don't fault that. No. Um, it's just, I think we outplayed it. Yeah. Um, I would certainly not turn down a game of code names. I still really I would. like it. Yeah. But it's. I wouldn't bring it. Well, I mean, there's specific areas where I would bring it. Yeah. Um, but it wouldn't be my, my game of choice for. My desire to say, hey guys, let's play code names is, kind of is gone. Uh, for the most player players. version of it would um, reinvigorate that? I think it might. Um, but then you and I have other word games. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know. We'll see. I want to mm -hmm. see how that works. Codenames Pictures might even redo some stuff. I just yeah, haven't gotten it. Pictures, yeah. Yeah, so. That's, I've it's, seen it. Yeah. I've, I've seen people playing it. I've. Um, I don't know. It'd be interesting. Yeah. Uh, 42, 1960, The Making of the President. Love that game. See, you've only played that once. I love that. And that, see, you can't even fault me. That's moved up. That was 59 last year. Oh, so in addition to new games, that's really moved I up. I wish they had it, just that same mechanic, but just for unnamed president. Mm -hmm. B, A, and B. Sure. Um, which is kind of like what Twilight Struggle is, but... I but that's like still communism of, versus... I like the idea of elect a president, but yeah. elect your own president, not like the history... I, I like it because I like it for what it is because of the history part of it, and I'm a huge history person, uh, but I think it'd be cool to like name your president and yeah. choose I'm, how you're going to... Are you going to be Republican or are you going to be Democrat? How are you going to run your... I'd like to see them go back. Um, there was a really good election in like the 1800s that ended up going to the House to decide the, the outcome. Um, but like that kind of an outcome, that kind of a, a race, it's that less. Happened? Might be. It's less uh, fresh in our minds, and so it has less of the the current day political stigma against it. It's more of a, well, that's definitely in the history. Well, they chose, I think they chose the right pair. Oh yeah, that was a great election. election. Um, not only election, but times of oh, yeah. the, the missile crisis and all that stuff going yeah. on. Well, because I don't know why they ever came out with the 2008 election game that was like a, Wait, what? <laughs> is it the same type of game, or is it? Some, I know it's yeah. it's election year two thousand eight or something. Yeah. Else, election two thousand eight. But there, GMT is coming back out with nineteen sixty, like a, a reprint, a, a new edition of it. Okay. Uh, so they're cleaning up some rule stuff. They're cleaning up card text. And, I but, may like it more because I won, but. Yeah. Uh, but we uh, had a really close election. It was a very close election. Like if I flipped one big state. Then I take it. So yeah. that tells you how close it was. I just like that whole idea of oh, yeah. balancing, yeah, like where you're going to spend your time and all that stuff. Is it's great. It's a, it's a it's an area control game that you don't even feel like you're worried about the area control because you've got cards, you've got uh, you've got the issues over here, you've got the media to deal with. You, the theme pulls through very very well for that game, and not is, very many election games do that. No. It, it, it is it it's immersive. Yeah, but you don't even care which side you're on. You just care that you're going after mm -hmm. you're you're going for the win. Yeah, that's what matters. And I'm you know I'm a sucker for theme. Too, oh yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. All right, uh, forty one, Glocks. 
it did make the list and it did go that high. Yeah, I knew it would. But I didn't think it was going to go 41. I didn't high. think it would go that high, but. It may settle, mm -hmm. but I think. I think it'll stay on your list for a while. I think it will, and I think there's something to that game that resonates with me. It's, it's numbers, it's plotting multiple moves ahead, trying to figure out where everything goes, knowing that you, you only have so many options, mm -hmm. and trying to truly make the best of any situation, good, bad, indifferent, mediocre, whatever place you're in, you can always do something. Fits your puzzling mind, too. There you go. So, yeah. so that's why that's there. Uh, 40 is Suburbia. Still have yet to play. I don't know that I have a desire to play it a lot, like a huge mm -hmm. desire to play it. I want to play it because I haven't. Sure. Um, sure. I, it's, it's city building. I, I, you may end up liking Between Two Cities more. Oh, I think I would for sure. Hands down. Just what I know of suburbia, as far as what I've seen through in playthroughs. Yeah. But um, but there's something there. I I enjoy. I think I would like castles. I think I like castle. What I like castles a... Matt King Ludwig more than suburbia still. Mm. But you didn't play that suburbia. No castles. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I know I played that with somebody else. Yeah, it was, it was us. We okay. played it, I forget who, uh, was it the other day? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so, but I like Suburbia. It's it's one of my good ones. But we'll get you to play it sometime. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, 39, and this did fall down. Spectre Ops. Again, I haven't played it a bunch. I still like it for what it is. Mm -hmm. But I think last year I overhyped it a bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, I... It was 11 last year. Yeah. Yeah, you overhyped it, it a lot last it, year. It, it's come back. I think it's fallen into a better position this mm -hmm. year. It's. I still enjoy it. I know you have your issues with it. I was able to play with a different group. Mm -hmm. uh, and... We didn't have the same problems that you experienced. There was still oh, too long for what it is. Yeah, <laughs> like there was still some thought, but it was also their first time playing, mm -hmm. and the game was still shorter than the time that you, the last time you played, that was way too long. So I think there are issues with certain groups of people that want to way overanalyze everything. Mm -hmm. At some, that's a game that does benefit from a clock. Mm -hmm. Even if it's, hey, okay, you guys have three minutes to figure out where you're going. Yeah. That doesn't feel excessively fast. Um, and even if the three-minute timer goes, you're like, okay, now make your moves. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, your time's up, make your moves. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, 38, Machi Koro. You haven't played a ton. Yeah, I've played twice. But I played in the store championship and I won. So yeah. there's a natural inclination to appreciate it. I do like the game. I like both expansions that came with it. The first one more than the second one. Harbor? Uh, the or Harbor something. more than Millionaire's Row. Yeah. A Millionaire's Row introduced some cards that really brought in problems. Harbor has a couple of problems, but not the same. I feel like there's some runaway cards in that game. A Millionaire's Row. Yeah. Yeah. I just, at this point, I trim my my set. I say, we're not playing with that card. We're not playing with that. We're not playing with that. And now this game is somewhat better. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 37 is Suro. Still sticking there? Still sticking there. Suro with Suro of the Seas or just? Uh, just Suro. I haven't played enough Suro of the Seas. Okay. So, um. The one time I played it, I, I enjoyed it, but uh, it was it was just okay. I feel like it takes away from the elegance of Soro. Mm -hmm. uh, I certainly wouldn't uh, discourage someone from buying Soro of the Seas, because you could play it without any of the extras and just play Soro. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. on a bigger board on a on a map that uses ships instead of dragon tiles, and you'd be fine. Yeah. But yeah, I am not. I'm not worried about that. And then you'd have the extras to play with. Yeah. So, uh, Thirty six is fugitive. Interesting. New jumps up. I'll fall next year. I'm sure. I don't know. Yeah, really? I. But I really like that game because I thought about. It. I've already gone through a bit of uh, liking it a little less, seeing the flaws of the game. But what I like is really good. Yeah, and, and there are. <laughs> There are some issues. We ran into some issues during the 24, but um, I think that was more due to sleep deprivation mm -hmm. than anything else. Because mm -hmm. when the roles were reversed, and I was trying to figure you out, I was still doing all right. Yeah. So, yeah, I... That wasn't a game... Wasn't a game that sat well with me on the 24. No. That was, like, right at my, like... Sleepy time. <laughs> yep. Very much new time. Um, number 35 is the big mover upper this year, and that is Can't Stop. That you was, played it more? I played it more. I, I now own my own copy. Mm. Uh, As do I. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, that was 72 last year, so big jump. That's, an ever, that's going to be an evergreen game, I think, for oh, me. It's a push-your-luck game. Mm -hmm. It is quintessential push-your-luck. And it's super easy because it's roll dice, make your matches, and what do you want to do? Impossibly win in one turn until you get talked out of it. Yeah. And horribly lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, 34. I believe this is my top city building game. And that is Quadropolis. Yeah. That's what I thought it was going to be. So. Uh, it's moved up. It was 45 last year, so that's 34. Uh, Have you played it since? Uh, I think I played it in the fall. Not with Not you. With I played it at Gate Play. Okay. With, uh, you played it with Andrew. I played the yeah. expansion. Yeah. Or not the expansion. I played Hard Mode. Yeah. There's an expansion now, I think. But I haven't yeah, played that. I don't know that I have a desire to play it. I like it's what's in the base it is. Yeah. yeah. I may get it at some point, but mm -hmm. I don't need it. So, uh, yeah. I mean, another one of those city building games, but I like the cooperative, oh, not cooperative, competitive city building. Mm -hmm. Limited options and less options as you go further. Mm -hmm. so, uh, 33, this took a hit. Splendor. I don't fault that. It's not bad. It's still in my top third. It wouldn't be that high for me. <laughs> no, because you don't have the same history with it. Yeah. But I, I like Splendor. I think it's it, it's an interesting game. It's um, it's got a lot of it's got the snowball effect. Mm -hmm. Once you get rolling, there's things you can do, but you don't even have to take that path. You can mm -hmm. win with saving up for um, points cards right off. And just one time I played it, the one time I've played it, I won. And okay. I've kind of got a, a want to like try out the app and see how the app works. I really so. like the app. Because mm -hmm. uh, there's a challenge mode mm -hmm. that has you play in different ways. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy that a lot. Uh, 32, Shadows Over Camelot. Not the top co-op on your list. Nope. Not uh, the top three on your list. Not know. even the top trader game on my list. Yeah. So, uh, but it's still a really good one. It's fallen down a little bit. It was twenty five last year. But it's it's solid. Mm -hmm. It's definitely solid for what it is. And Good options in the game. Good, uh, good theme. Mm -hmm. Not the best theme. I don't always feel like I'm a knight of the round table as I'm playing cards. Yeah. But there are times like that urgency to fight the dragon mm -hmm. when when we're 
going at the end. You're trying to get the grail of that mad dash. Uh, there are moments where it's like, okay. Off the catapults. And yeah. Like, the, it's a lot of just like card, mindless card play. Yeah, there's a lot of build up to get to that final push. It's almost like a movie. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's pros and cons. Um, another one of the big movers, probably the second biggest mover, I want to say, aside from new games, uh, Time Stories. At number 31. It was uh, lower last Yeah, year. it was 87 last year. Oh, I thought it was lower in the sense of, like... No, 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 it was... Because huh. I didn't know it that well. So you'd only played it once? Yeah. And, uh... Well, that, I think it was even... I think Josh still owned it. I yeah, he did. I, I hadn't bought it from him at that point. So, now I own it. Now I've played... Uh, every expansion that's out except Lumen Fidel. That's out for today. It just came out like yeah. last week uh, or earlier this week. Was there anyone playing that? At, or, uh, well, no, there wouldn't have been playing no. that yet. Um, so some people did play Time Stories, yeah. but they were playing Asylum. But yeah, I, I really enjoy Time Story. And it's the, the different scenarios. It's fallen down my list now for me. Yeah. Because you've kind of done everything. Mm -hmm. And done everything a couple of times. Which I think is my fault. That's that's where it's fallen. Is, that's why it's fallen, I think. Is because. Sure. But I enjoy watching other people do stuff. Sure, because you see their path of discovery. Mm -hmm. I've heard really good things about Lumen today. It's a Spanish Inquisition? I believe so. No one expects it. <laughs> Uh, but I've heard it's got, it kind of takes the best aspects of what's come before. That's cool. Puzzles, um, tension, cool. um, thematic integration. So the, there's not just a, a one focus. It's got a lot of good parts. Yeah. So potential. Mm -hmm. uh, number 30, Cash and Guns. I was wondering where that was coming. It, I was thinking twenties, but almost. Yeah, almost. Um, not even the top party game though. Close though. Uh, yeah, I mean, you guys saw the playthrough. You know what this brings to the table. It, mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it, it's a Mexican standoff. Which one of us is bluffing? Neither. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's the best part. Uh, 29, Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. Yeah. Need to get it back to the table. But again, the expansion's coming! With I got it. Awesome. So. Uh, but we gotta have people. This is one you gotta have at least five, ideally seven. Mm -hmm. and the toughest part about it. Yep. But aside from that, it's a great game. Way better than um, Mysterium. I will say that right now. Notice that was not on my list. It was close. Yeah. It was in the 100 somethings. And like within the next 20. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, 28 is new. Okay. It is uh, a game that you own. Okay. That should uh, tell you one of two things. One of three things. I think you've played Vast once. I have not played Vast in time. Really? Yeah. Um, you want to get an expansion for this. Is it Police Precinct? No. No. It is cooperative. What's the mechanic? The main game mechanic? Dice? Dice? Trying to think of cards? Oh. He now looks over at the game shelf. 
I can't see. A, a big book? Big me too? No. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, yes, yes. Um, Agents of Smirsh. There you go. Agents of Smirsh. Yes. When you said expansion, I was thinking like something that is actually available. Right. <laughs> right. The, the, that expansion is not. Get on that publisher. Agents uh, of Smirsh. Great game. Absolute great game. I have yet to win it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> stupid. Correctly lie. have yet to win it correctly, I should say. Is yeah. Uh, that game will be a thorn in our side oh, for a while. But we will be filming oh, that. Yeah. That is an awesome game yes. to film. I will never probably that will never get old for me, I don't think. No. I mean I think it might at some point. I think and I think it's catapulted over time stories for me. Catapulted over time stories for me. Yeah. Barely. Because but. the the discovery is m more varied. Yeah. And, and it's some fun. of the just some of the just funny stuff that happens yeah, in exactly. characters throughout. That's like. And yeah. it's a little quicker. Mm -hmm. There's more variety built into that box. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Twenty seven is a game that's been on my top one hundred every single year that I've done one. So that's going back like seven years now. Okay. Kingsburg. I wouldn't have said that one. Yeah. Or I wouldn't have bought that one. Yeah. But, uh, Is that the only king left on this list? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not even the only king. That's going to be your top party. Uh, depends on how you define party. Uh, but yeah, Kingsburg is uh, dice placement, resource gathering city building with your resources. It's not even city building, it's just upgrades. It's kinda like um it's kinda like uh Star the Star Trek one that just came not just came out, but um it's the one that they did on, on tabletop. Five year mission? Yeah. yeah. I've played it. You can play it. I'm curious where that's gonna fall for you when you do play it. Uh, yeah, let's see. Well, uh, 26 is that other king. Of king Tokyo. of Tokyo! And New York. And New York. really king of New, New York. York. Yeah. Because uh, that's, that's the that's complete the game. game. Yeah. yeah. Tokyo is the, the gateway game. Mm -hmm. And I love king of Tokyo. I played more king of Tokyo than king of New York. Mm -hmm. But I store them in one box now. I have yeah, everything. them all. Yeah. You took out the insert. I did. Yeah. What inserts? What inserts? Yeah. I, I'm not obsessive like you uh, in that regard. But it's I just fit it all barely. Yeah, and I remember when we played that that last time at um, Utopia. Yeah, that was like eight people. That was a never again. Yeah. Never. But I remember again. trying to fit everything back in the box. I was like, how the heck are you going to do How did that? Yeah, yeah. All that came yeah. out of there? Yeah. Barely. What is this, Hermione's bag? Yep. Was back. It's actually a TARDIS, <laughs> but it's uh, bigger on the inside. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Twenty-five is Gloomhaven. Yeah, you know it was coming. Yeah, I knew it was and, somewhere. Uh, That's gonna be overtime storage for me too. Yeah, it's uh, it's a campaign. The it's... one thing that doesn't put it up high though for me, I think, is just that. That we haven't came across any like scenarios that feel different. Sure. The encounters uh, evolved. No, I, the I, I, the skirmish and stuff have all felt kind of the same. I like the road events, I like the city mm -hmm. events, I like the choices that you make, but the actual scenarios all do mm -hmm. feel a little drawn out, a little that slow. That may change, but yeah. No. I don't know that it will. I don't know that it can. I think but I think it may change in the sense of like Okay, you go into this with these handicaps, or which means you have to play it a little bit differently, but that's about right. it. Well, that last scenario we did, we all had uh, three negative ones. Yeah. So that was something, but it didn't really change mm -hmm. anything. We just knew we had to go hard. Mm -hmm. uh, go ham. Yeah. All right, uh, 24 is 24 from last year. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't even know. I wouldn't have remembered. Formula D. Okay. 
stayed exactly where it was. Mm -hmm. And that says something. There's consistency. Lower for you than for me. But yeah, it, or it should be. Yeah, but, I'll say, yeah. We'll see. That's a uh, rankings file. But I enjoy it. We played it a few times here. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's racing. It's I enjoy it. We need to play it with my expansion tracks, but every time somebody plays it, it's impromptu. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, hey, let's play that. And it's like, ah, oh, I've only had my expansions. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll, we'll we need to play World Cup status. We need to. Yeah, we need to do it. There's a lot. Of, we've talked about that with a lot of that. Things. I don't think is going to be on your list. Oh, yeah, the first goal. Yeah. Yeah, that, that fell off. Um, number 23, Lemming the Mafia. I was wondering where that would fall. I know it's becoming one of your not favorites, but it's, it's like next surprising. Yeah, yeah, it's like my next level tier, tier two. Yeah, uh, it's it's a lot of fun. I I have fun with this mm -hmm. game. Whenever I need something, like if I'm kind of just bummed out, it's like let's play Lemming Mafia. Mm -hmm. I feel like being a little bit mean. Let's go kill some lemmings, guys. Yeah. I'm feeling bummed out. No, no, it, I'm gonna take out my. <laughs> it's not even kill lemmings. Let's empower the yeah. lemmings to kill themselves. themselves. Yep. It, it's, Whether it be cement or water, or maybe even both. Yeah. They'll jump in as they get their yeah. second pair of shoes, so that they'll sink just a little bit faster. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, no problem. The artwork on it's fun. Oh, it's all fun. It's, it's all, it's, it's, all it, it's one of those games you just don't take too seriously, <laughs> and everybody does fine with it. Yeah. All right, twenty-two Alhambra. Okay. Now we're getting we're getting in there into the mini games. I mean, Alhambra is still a gateway game, but with all the expansions I throw in meat. there, there's some meat. Mm -hmm. I mean, typically what we play is still not the meat. Yeah. It's more just some. some Scratch the surface mm -hmm. options. I I bring in like the the diamonds, mm -hmm. which are like a wild currency. Uh, the wild or the uh, any rotation tiles. Mm -hmm. Those are nice. Every once in a while, I put coins in the game. That makes it easier. That's like change. Mm -hmm. So that's well, there. All right. Uh, twenty one. Article twenty seven. I love that game. I haven't played it. Yeah. Wow. It's been too long. You so, brought it last time, I think. Maybe. Yeah. I, it's been... That's another like electoral type game that I think does it. It's it's that table negotiation. Mm -hmm. So funny bit, this was twenty last year. Okay. It's and, twenty one now? And it's twenty one now. And my twenty one last year is my twenty what? this year. <laughs> and that is Escape, the Curse of the Temple. Oh, okay. So they just flip flopped. And I escaped more. I did, but I think last year I was sitting there hemming and hawing on which one I liked more. And this year I was sitting there hemming and hawing on which one I liked more. Yeah. And I just, it's literally a coin flip between yeah. those two. In reality, both of them have moved up on my thought process, mm -hmm. but they've stayed in basically the same mm -hmm. place. And they'll probably stay there a while. I I think so. They are definitely like in the twenty to thirty range. They're like the tier two. They yeah. are very good games that I enjoy. That I will probably never say no to. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, I, I may not be in the right mood, but mm -hmm. eh, for the most part, I enjoy them. And Escape is that ten minute real time frenetic dice and just go go go. Mm -hmm. All right, nineteen. You're gonna. Flashpoint. No, nah, it, I mean, it's in my top twenty. I won't hit you for that. That's, I mean, like it's still in my top twenty. That that's something, right? Yeah. Okay. Don't blame me for your poor life decisions again. It was sixteen last year. Yeah, I mean, I still won't blame you for your poor poor decisions. I will say this: three. There are three new games ahead of it, so it has essentially stayed. Exactly the same, and they're and it's better than all eighteen other games on the list. Ooh, ooh, oh. <laughs> I, 
theming better. It does have theming. I grant Theming, it. one of the best themed games I've played. I will put it in my top five mm -hmm. of theming. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Right there next to, like, Formula D's great theme. Sure. That's the other one I said. Um, uh, if anything, so my knock against it is that sometimes it's a little too much. Although then we play, like, the submarine. Yeah. And it's like... We get demolished. We get demolished because there were only two of us. And now, we have an app in development. Yeah, that is good. That's, that's shiny. Too bad no career mode. Yeah. But whatever. Alright. 18. Lanterns. The Harvest Festival. I was wondering when that would. I kind of forgot about it, but... Right around 40, 50, I was like, I wonder where Lanterns is. Lanterns is going to still be pretty high for him, I think. But and uh, it's moved up. I was thinking 20s, and then I forgot once we got to the yeah. 20s. And then, if you really want, Lanterns in the Flashpoint was another one of those. Yeah, yeah, no. Screw you with your freaking trying reasoning that Lanterns is better than freaking Flashpoint. No way. No how. It depends on who I want to play with. No way. No how. Okay. <laughs> so 17 is Onitama. I have taken a shine to that game. Really? Okay. I, you've seen it. Yeah, oh yeah, I, for I, sure. I'm like, hey, let's play Onitama. Oh, for sure. So I, I surprised myself that it moved, it got up this high. Because it's new. It's a great game. It is a great game. But I'm you like, want to play chess? Forget it. Don't play it. Play Onitama. Yeah, like, I won't... I don't like chess. Well, I'm okay with chess, but I will play with Tom. Mm -hmm. Just because it's easy. The variety, yeah. And my moves are right there in front of me. So. Game's going to be different at all times. Yep, and every game is going to be different. Mm -hmm. So that is what's encouraging for me. Uh, number 16 was in my top 10 last year, but I don't think we've played it since. Uh, that's Alien Frontier. I missed that game. Yeah. It's kind of like Kingsburg, that dice placement. Mm -hmm. Do what you do. Uh, there's a ton there. I've got almost all the expansions, if not all the expansions. Uh, they just did a second printing of it? Or like a fourth. Or whatever printing. I've got the fourth yeah. edition. Um, it's good. Like I'm not disputing any part of it. It's just, it's fallen down due to lack of play. And that's kind of a theme this year. Mm -hmm. But uh, stupid stuff. Uh, 15 is Pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, and I should note, I did not consider Pandemic Legacy for my list at all. That's I did right. last year. Yeah, but that's right. this year I said, yeah, I'm good. So yeah, pandemic moves up a little bit. It was eighteen last year. So um, it's it, good. Yeah, good game. Is it really good co-op? Uh, that's the top pure co-op on my list. Okay. So that says something. But also weird. Pandemic used to be in my top ten. Yeah. A couple of years oh back. yeah. And it's it's not that it's done anything wrong. It's just I don't play it as much. Yeah, and it does get samey. Yeah, a little bit. Um, fourteen was twelve last year. Uh, that is World of Smog on Her Majesty's mm -hmm. Service. I'm glad it stayed there, man. Yeah, I, basically right in the same. Spot. I was getting worried there, as far as did it fall it. completely off the list? Yeah, I was like. Right around 15, I was like, it can't, it can't still be that high. I guess it is. Yeah. I, I, there's no I just, I didn't think it fell off the list by your choice. I thought it just, you forgot about it. No, uh, I would hope not. Yeah. Um, yeah, nothing, there's nothing in this game that I hate. There are some weird powers of the, the characters, agents. the agents, that I dislike, but you don't always see them yeah so for for that that's all random that's all mm -hmm. stuff that you just deal with that's any given game mm -hmm. but overall 
it just it plays different. It it is a different challenge every time, and even what you have to do to get around the board and how other people are trying to get around the board, mm -hmm. how everyone's messing with you directly or indirectly mm -hmm. uh, really changes the game. I know you have a horror story there, <laughs> but... Stuck for eight turns. Yeah, that was bad. Couldn't move. Couldn't the, do nothing. The, that's really bad. Oh, it's my turn again? Okay, go yes. ahead. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> And the only reason why I got out of that was because someone, out of the kindness of their heart, was like, okay, we can let Corey go now. Great game, though. I love the game. I'm not going to let that hinder. There are other games that I've had that experience and I've let it hinder me, like, say, Catan. Catan. But not this one. Notice that game's suspiciously absent from my yeah. list. Yeah. And Carcassonne. I thought maybe Star Trek Catan would be on there, but. And I considered that, but it's it it came in at like one oh three. So yeah, Carcassonne like, was one I was thinking of too. When yeah, we were talking about Kingsburg. Yeah, or not Kingsburg. Uh, tile placement. The last tile placement you were talking about. Uh, Quadropolis. Yeah. Uh, thirteen. Battlestar Galactica. So you wish to be a traitor. That's your last. Co-op. There's one more. Would you consider that co-op? Yeah. Okay. Kind of. Okay. It's it's there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Th this hasn't seen much play, so it fell down just a little bit. It'll never fall off. It'll never fall off. It'll never fall in the. the Below twenty, is that yeah, one? it'll never fall below fifty. I'll say really? that. Yeah. Just, well, what if I go like two years without playing it? It'll still be there, I think. I mean, the thematicism is super yeah. high. The 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 way the game grabs you and mm -hmm. sets. The one not here. here. I have is just the length of it. It is long, but sometimes you make uh, you make exceptions mm -hmm. for long games. They're good. Why not? Why yeah. Not? Right. Would you rather spend? Three to four hours playing one really great game, or would you rather spend that same three to four hours playing a bunch of mediocre mm -hmm. games? Yeah, I'd rather spend that time playing a great game. Mm -hmm. so. All right, um, number twelve for sale. That's a game that's never going anywhere. Mm -hmm. That was thirteen last year. So it's, there's another it's one that's kind of sneakily suspicious right now. Yeah, like the first year I did that list, uh, this kind of a list, it was in like the 30s. And I'm like, eh. And then the next year, it catapulted all the way up to the like the 13, 12, mm -hmm. 11 spot. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> it works. Yeah. It just fits there. Like, it's a really good game. And I like it. I'll probably never say no. It's filler. But it's the right kind of filler. I can teach someone in mm -hmm. two minutes how to play. We can play a game in 15 minutes, if that. And sometimes they'll say, let's play again. And sometimes mm -hmm. they won't. But either okay. way, it was never a waste. Yeah. So that is that. Um, number 11 is Ink and Gold. I was going to say that. And that's, yeah. it's right yeah. there. I was like, that when I said sneakily suspicious, I was like, yeah. where the heck's he can go on this list? Right there. Yeah. Absolutely right there. This was 10 last year, 11 now. Same idea. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I agree with the idea. placing yeah. as far as it over for sale. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've flip flopped those in years past, mm -hmm. not last year, but this year. And it, it, it really is just. Uh, Just uh, it, it's it's a good game. It's uh, it's that push your luck. I like it a little bit more than Can't Stop, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's what it is. Uh, number ten is Seven Wonders Duel. Okay. I know you had said it took a big, or you were thinking it took a big jump. Yeah, so it actually did. It moved up twenty five spots. It was thirty five last year, and now it's number ten, and it's. For people that understand drafting, 
-hmm. it is so easy to just play the game. Mm -hmm. It's that two-player game, and it, it, it works. Yeah. And there's there's so many things to watch out for. you got to watch the military track. you, you got to watch science development. Uh, and you're trying to score points. Yeah. And uh, you're also trying to work on your... Uh, your Monuments, and it's probably a better term for that, but your wonders. Yeah. And in doing all of that, the game works together. And when it, when the game flows like that, when the mechanics are just tight, and they, they come together, then how do you complain? Yeah. Because I can't. Uh, number nine is the Resistance, specifically Avalon. Okay. And yes, that took a hit. That was number three last year. Why is that? I thought it was like six or seven. No, it was three. Wow. Um, again, you know, the planet. I don't dislike it. Yeah. It's just, if I'm not playing it, I'm not ranking it. It's not going to be in my top five if I don't play yeah. it. Um, I still enjoy it, but there's a reason we don't play it. Right, too much, and we don't have the right people to mm -hmm. play it right now. Uh, number eight is Star Trek Ascendancy, and I was that on the list last year. No, uh, it didn't. It wasn't even was, out. Yeah, sure. it came out at Gen Con. Oh, okay, and so that was like August, September. So I got my copy. Right around then, last year, mm -hmm. like September. So, um, yeah, I, I will admit that the ranking here is slightly built on what I know is coming. Oh, okay. In terms of the Ferengi, the Cardassians, and the Borg. But it's also, without that, this is still like a top 15. And I'm not letting what I know is coming influence it way too much. Mm -hmm. It's saying just adding a fourth and maybe a fifth player probably puts it at this level. Mm -hmm. And so I want to give it the benefit of the doubt to that level. Uh, it's probably the only game I'm giving that exception to. Mm -hmm. um, because I, the game is meant for more than you, you do not, you don't make a, a 4X game for only three people. I understand the look for time, but there's, there's it's, here's things the thing, that it's, limit it. It's not like a Battlestar Galactica, though, when, when it's worth the time that you spend, I feel. It's a great game, um, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, with the times we'll see. We'll see. I just like the it's the one thing that has with the Frankie and the Borgs and stuff, Cardassians, is just the variety on you don't have to play. You're yeah. not you're not required to play with these. Three. Sure, you can, if you want to play with three players, but you want to, then you still at least have choices on. Yeah, which I mean the Borg are not going to be player; they're yeah. NPC. But still, even having five options for three people will still be. Um, number seven is Gravwall. So that took a bit of a jump. That was like 14 last year. So it's simple. Mm -hmm. It's super simple and it, it works. Mm -hmm. It absolutely works. Uh, number six is Seven Wonders. I was curious if when you said Duel of Fear, I was like, did he no, really those drop are, Seven Wonders off completely? Those are separate games worthy of their own spots. It feels better. <sighs> Duel is a better two-player experience. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, you can play Seven Wonders. You can, too, but it's but all like variant. It's, it's, not like it's wax set in stone. But Seven Wonders, <sighs> Seven Wonders is the best drafting game out there. Mm hmm I will I'll agree. I will argue that point for a while to anyone who wants to argue it. But um, the 
the options you have now in the game lead to a lot of good choice. Yeah. Uh, and it takes a little bit to understand those choices and the implications of the choices you're making and to know that this uh, either encourages or forces you to go down this path mm -hmm. uh, and also to have some balance of hate drafting. But when you understand the game more on that level, like when you start playing it a little more aggressively, mm -hmm. you, it becomes a really solid game. Yeah. Like the casual aspect of it is great. It's, it would still be a really fun game. But the experience of, okay, I want to I wanna win, and mm -hmm. I'm playing with people who want to win, mm -hmm. and everyone's playing on that same level. It's a totally different experience. Yeah. The worst thing is when somebody's like, I want to win, and I'm going to do everything at all costs to win, mm -hmm. and other people are like, I just want to play and have fun. Yeah. That's the worst experience you can ever have in any game. Yeah. Uh, and that's me. That makes it tough. All right, number five. This is the uh, highest new game. You own it. Mm -hmm. It's not the letter one because we only play that one. No. It has nothing to do with words. In fact, you can play the whole game without ever saying a word. I wish I had my list of games in front of me. Uh, it would probably be in your top 20. Really? Maybe even top 10. Saying a lot. I think it is. Without ever saying a word. You're hinting. Right, let's see if I go. America. Um. Parenthood. No. Oh, I saw that on clearance for five bucks. Did you? Yeah. Still not worth it. Really? Yeah. Not really. Uh. Oceans Closing. Not there. What's that? What's that? Oceans Closing. Not there. Yes, it is. Is it? It is Pushing Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's totally Pushing Explosion. Oh, okay. I really like the game. No, it's a great game. It's a I fantastic was, game. I was when you think of a game that you play without saying a word, that's not the one. But you could. You could, yeah. I, I'm not saying you do, but you could. Yeah. It, it's marbles. It's chain reactions. It's uh, how well do you see what will happen? How well can you? make the combos come together, and it, it works. That game just works. And just the, the wow factor when you bring it out on the table. And oh yeah, it's got one of the coolest pieces of, uh, of gaming in existence. It'll stay there probably for a while for you. Yep. I don't know if it would fall in 20 for me, I don't know. Be interesting. Yeah, we'll see. All right, uh, number four, the deck builder. Not leg legendary. Not oh, Dominion. Yeah, it's Dominion. It's totally Dominion. Yeah. I mean, it, it's the deck builder. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 
kind of hard to say more than that. It's the mm -hmm. game that started all of this whole deck building craze. But it's everyone knocks it for the lack of theme. But do you necessarily have to have the strongest theme when you've got mechanics that work? No. Uh, I mean, well, for me, yes, but... But, but there is some theme. It's, it's that medieval, the, the, the pseudo-Renaissance era, the, the castles, the fiefdoms, the, the... But I will say there is something about too much theme, like, what is it, uh... Feeding the people in, uh... Agricola. Agricola. <laughs> That's okay. That's yeah. worker upkeep. Yeah. Like, there's, there's something there, but... It, yeah. I still have yet to play Dominion, so... You can't really judge, mm -hmm. but it's there. Alright, um, so what's my top game that's not in my top two? <laughs> Boy. <laughs> it, I mean, come on, there's just the one that hasn't been mentioned. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. All the same time, it's Ticket to Ride. Yeah. I, I have this great dichotomy. I love some heavy games, and then I love gateway esque mm -hmm. games. And Ticket to Ride. Your whole list is an example of that. Right. Ticket to Ride, Dominion, Potion Explosion. All of those are gateway games. You can get, depending on what somebody likes, what they're inclined to, you could get somebody into the gaming hobby on those games. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a really good System. I, I incorporate all Ticket to Ride mm -hmm. into this, at least all that I've played. So that's US, Europe, Nordic, uh, the Marklin edition, uh, and then the various map packs. Mm -hmm. uh, not the most recent, like um, Europe, and, or UK and Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I want to play that because that's supposedly got some really cool stuff with like, mm -hmm. technology. But. Mm -hmm. What I played all goes into Ticket to Ride. So, it's solid. Mm -hmm. Alright. And then there were two. And then there were two, and I argue with you about this all the time. <laughs> your two should be your one, and your one should be your two. But hey, you have at them, Dave. <laughs> have at it and justify. Yeah. Alright. Should we play, the, play some theme music right now? Yeah, you know, it's crazy. Because I'm still debating which one to actually say. Like, even at this this uh, moment, I I still debate. Which one do you play more? Which one do you play tournaments for? Which, which one? one do you own tons and tons of things for, with? Well, that's kind which of one not fair. do you do you name this channel after? Actually, technically, they both could be, but I uh, like technically both work. <laughs> which one do I do daily videos? Daily on? videos yeah, on yeah. which one do you freaking sometimes somewhat get paid for at times? Yeah, that that was the past. But you see, which one have I played more in lifetime? Probably the same one I'm talking about. No, see, Cosmic, I've played more in Lifetime. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's, well, it, anyone that watches this channel knows the, the top two, so. Right, it, it's Cosmic Encounter versus Star Trek Attack Wing. And you ranked Co Attack Wing 2, Cosmic 1. But I think, I still maintain to this day, that I think it should be the opposite. And you're not going to be influenced by that. Of course, but well, um, I'm I'm still not giving a, a raking yet. What does the phone say? The phone doesn't matter. <laughs> we're gonna put the phone away right now. We're we're going to go through a pros cons list here. What did you play more at Origins? <sighs> Fourteen to one. Yep. <laughs> now, granted. There is not really a market for tournament play of Cosmic. There should, should be. At Cosmic there, Con. Yeah, there the could. The one year yeah. it happened. Um, there could be, for sure. Oh, yeah. And that would be great uh, great stuff to watch. That, I mean, that'd be cool. Um, but, 
there's a bigger community in, in the attack wing um, world. I don't know that there is, but there's I, a more dedicated community. There you go. Yeah. There's a more uh, there's a more passionate community. I, well, ugh. see, I gotta be careful because there are some really long term cosmic. Here's a problem I have with cosmic. The one problem I have with it. Too much variety. That is one game that has mm -hmm. too much variety. Because you will probably never see everything yeah. mm -hmm. that like you could play. I think right now there's about 150 powers yeah. in the game. <laughs> so let's say you were playing five player games, mm -hmm. single power games. Mm -hmm. It would take you 30 games mm -hmm. with never playing a repeat power mm -hmm. to see every power played. And are you going to remember? Any of the powers really the, by the thirtieth play that you played on the first play? Probably not. Depends on how quickly you play those thirty games. Correct. Yeah, but I still think it'd be very hard to remember how exactly. I mean, you you probably see it and you'd be like, oh yeah, I kind of remember how that game went, yeah. how I played it. Yeah. But it's good. so it will be different even when you play the same power because what you if you play the same power other the. Other four or five or three powers that are involved may be different than what they were the oh, previous yeah, time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so you still have to kind of adjust it, but I don't know. Um, I mean, I played a power at Origins that I had played in probably three years. But I'd still played it mm -hmm. in my 200-some plays of Cosmic. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed myself. The, the rest of the dynamic was totally different, mm -hmm. even though I had seen every... Uh, either every one of those powers or almost every one of those powers in some game before. Mm. Here, here's the problem I have, right? Every game of Cosmic Encounter I play, I have some chance of doing well. I can see that. Re regardless of what powers I have, because the table talk, the player interaction, the the cards that come out, mm -hmm. all of that can lead to different outcomes. There are games of Star Trek Attack Wing where the game is over as soon as we set the ships up because your build beats my build. It just does. It has all the counters to what I brought. I will agree with you by also saying that I think every game of Cosmic you've ever played or ever will play, you will thoroughly enjoy, whereas there are attack wing games that you will play that you may not enjoy. More because you just got battered or whatever. Where Here's the thing, if you get battered in Cosmic, I think you still would thoroughly enjoy that game. I typically come out with a good story. Yes. Um, I think... If you get battered in a tackling, you may not come out with a good story. So that's where I kind of see that. Um, I've had those days. It, your dice are just mm -hmm. cold, mm -hmm. and uh, your opponent just has an answer, and you're like, how quickly can this be over? Yeah. I guess that depends on how you look at the word favorite. Game of all time. <sighs> And you're absolutely right. I do more for the attack wing community than I do for the cosmic community. I'm a published playtester for the cosmic community. Not a published playtester for the attack wing community. I've done any playtesting for the attack wing community. I've been a reviewer. I was I mean in some ways I've been more exclusive. I've I'm one of two people who have ever been a preview person for the game, right? That, that's something you absolutely unique. Mm -hmm. But does that justify one game over the other? I, I, you're absolutely right. It took Star Trek Attack Wing to get me to go on a plane to go to Ohio for five days mm -hmm. To go to a convention that I arguably wanted to go to for a long time. And you were out of it within day what? Oh, I lost... U.S. Nationals was day three. Okay. 
And so here's another thing I will say. You were out of it in day three, and you still spent majority because there were a lot of games being played and stuff and the main the two games that you played there were attack wing and cosmic yeah. so even being out of it you still played it continued to play it yeah. as opposed to going and playing new games yeah so yeah. which is why it's so high on the list but no I yeah. think you would do the same thing for cosmic so i don't know that's that's yeah it's, it's, and if I was in a better position, uh, if I'd been in a better position health-wise, I would have gone to Minneapolis when they did Cosmic Con. Absolutely, yeah. gone. And, and I, I still hate that I couldn't have gone to that. Yeah. Because it would have been so much fun to do. Mm -hmm. Like, there were only a couple hundred people there. Because uh, that was at the Fantasy Flight Event Center. Yeah. And that was just... That's one of those, when else are you going to get all the Cosmic Encounter people in the same room? Mm -hmm. You're just not. So what's your ranking, dude? you got to give the camera a ranking. Fade to black. Yeah. <laughs> no satisfaction for anybody. <laughs> I don't have to commit. I mean... <laughs> just, just be quiet, man. Just be quiet. Did, did everybody walks away. Yeah. Is, okay. okay. Let the viewers be the judge, <laughs> based on our arguments and our debates. It's too much of a cop-out to call them both my favorites. Mm -hmm. they're, they're my favorites for different reasons. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I, like, I literally split hairs on these. Based on the phone ranking. It's cosmic over Star Trek Attack. Yep. Based on how you feel. On any given day, it's still cosmic of Attack Wing. Okay, there you go. At the best, Attack Wing, like Attack Wing at its best, is better than Cosmic at its best. Uh, I can yeah. say that, but my average play of the game, Cosmic's average, is better than Attack Wing's average. So, right then in stone. Two attack wing, one cosmic. <laughs> uh, that doesn't mean I love attack wing any less. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but I'm not turning this into a cosmic encounter show or channel. Well, that depends. <laughs> I mean, someday I'll probably do videos for cosmic. Yeah. Review one a day, one power a day. Right, that'll take me a half a year. Two days. <laughs> yeah, half a year. And release them every other day so you can do the whole year. The whole year. A year of cosmic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, know. Attack Wing will end at some point. Yeah. So, gotta, gotta keep the channel alive. I think somehow. Cosmic will end at some point too. Oh, yeah, but. It, it comes a point where you get too much writing. Too much out of balance. Yeah, but that's what the players are there for. So. Oh, cool. All right. Good that, list. That, that's been a long... I disagree with... A few things. A few things. A few things. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now the truth comes out. Well, I disagree with 18 things. Uh, let's say 20 for the whole game and uh, not be the debacle. And then... 18 things because there's one game on that list that should have been at one. And you're not talking about Flashpoint. That's your one. Oh, no, I'm not talking about Flashpoint at all. Uh, stay tuned for his list sometime. I'll have it within the next year and a half to, to eight years. <laughs> at the way at my pace, that's the way it works. I'm going to... I'm gonna duct tape them down at some point. In front of a computer screen and make me. No, no, no. I'm gonna sit there with you <laughs> and just duct tape you to the couch yeah. and give you two games and make you choose. It sounds like a great time. Sounds like an amazing time, actually. Don't tempt me with a good time. Okay, this is, this is way too awkward now. <laughs> All right. Um, that's 
that's it for us. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, until next time, we'll see you around the shipyard. Take care, guys. <laughs>